There's kind of a lot going on right here. Um, don't get overwhelmed. There's a graphic organizer that we're going to work through today. And then you see one of my like virtual post-it notes here. And then the text, it is titled A Desert of Ice. So this week in reading, we're going to focus on how readers can integrate or combine information from two or more sources. So right away in your brain, you should be thinking, but wait, we do that all the time in writing, right? We read articles. Uh, this week we're reading about banning straws. And usually there's more than one article in that text set. Sometimes we have three, we can even have up to four. In reading this week, we're just gonna take a look at two texts. So if you see here on this side of my screen, if I scroll down, this text is about Antarctica, and then you see the second one here, Antarctica's life. So two texts on a very similar topic, and we're gonna read through these. Again, these texts are full of information. They're nonfiction, informational text. The authors included a lot of great information about this continent, and we are going to read so that we can learn more so that then we're able to write and even speak about this topic knowledgeably. So if you take a look now at this graphic organizer, you can see it's divided into two columns. One for the text, A Desert of Ice, that I'm gonna read with you now, and then the side that you are going to work on after this video with the second text, Antarctica's Life. So we have three guiding questions that we're going to focus on as we read both articles today. The first one is asking what the climate is like on this continent. The second question is asking us what kinds of animal life can be found in Antarctica. And then the third one wants to know what kinds of plant life can be found here. So again, those are our three guiding questions that we kind of want to keep in the back of our brain as we're reading. So now I'm going to jump over here to the text and let's take a look right away. I see a nonfiction text feature. Um, I know that many of you are probably thinking, oh, well, that's a photograph and then that's a caption. So let's read that caption. It says, only emperor penguins are able to lay their eggs and raise chicks in Antarctica's harsh winter conditions. Well, that kind of helps answer one of our questions from our graphic organizer, doesn't it? Right, they wanted to know what kind of animal life could be found. So if I jump over here into the graphic organizer, I can note that only emperor penguins can lay eggs and raise chicks in Antarctica. Let's continue. So now we're on paragraph one. I don't see any other nonfiction text features in this article, so I'm gonna start reading up here. Of the seven continents, Antarctica is most unlike the other six. This landmass is about 1.5 times the size of the United States, so it's much larger than the US. But there are no permanent human residents here. This is due to the continent's inhospitable climate. Well, that's a word that I'm not necessarily familiar with. Let me continue reading and see if there's any context clues that'll help me figure out that unknown word. Home of the South Pole, Antarctica is the coldest, driest, and windiest place on Earth. Well, if we're talking about a place that is the coldest, the driest, and the windiest, and we're saying that no human residents can live there because of the inhospitable climate, I'm going to assume then that inhospitable must mean that it's not very pleasant. So I'm gonna write here, paragraph one, and I'm just gonna write a quick note what this was about. Um, has, let's say, rough slash harsh climate. I also learned there's no residents, meaning nobody lives there. Paragraph two, a thick sheet of ice almost completely covers the continent. 
The ice varies in thickness from place to place, but on average, it is about one mile thick. Whoa, that just made my brain go wow. If all of the ice in Antarctica were to melt, oceans worldwide would rise by about 200 feet. That's incredible. So paragraph two, I learned that it's basically covered, right, by this sheet of ice. They even said in some areas it's like one mile thick. Paragraph three. I haven't really heard any more about animals and I certainly haven't read anything about plant life. So let's continue. Paragraph three. During its warmest month, January, that's kind of strange. We think here it's pretty cool in January and that's its warmest month. The continent's average high temperature is about 18 degrees below zero. Scientists recorded a cruel 129 degrees below zero in 1983. Wow, so during the warmest month on this continent, it's still 18 degrees below zero. That's unreal. The sun shines continuously, meaning nonstop, from mid-September to mid-March. That's weird. So as a good reader, that kind of makes me go, what? And I have to think about it for a minute. Well, if you think mid-September to mid-March, that's like September, October, November, December, January, February, March. So the, sh the sun is always shining, it never stops. Then it disappears for the other half of the year. Well, what do you think happens when it disappears? And it's probably dark and it's probably very cold even colder than it is, you know, during the warmest month. Few creatures can survive the extreme winter cold. All right, so in paragraph three, I learned that the weather is so cold that few creatures can survive. Paragraph four. We normally think of deserts as hot, sandy places. Yeah, I guess I wouldn't really classify Antarctica necessarily in my brain as a desert, but let's see what they have to say. Yet, Antarctica is a desert too. Huh. Well, as a reader, again, I'm kind of pausing because that surprises me. In the middle of the continent, only about two inches of moisture, usually in the form of snow, fall each year. Even the Sahara Desert receives more rain. Okay. So what I'm guessing is that because there's such a small amount of rain, that's why it's classified as a desert. That's right. And they're saying here that there's only about two inches of moisture that's falling each year, but it's usually snow. The coast of Antarctica received more precipitation, but only an eight inch per year average. So paragraph four was mostly about, it is actually a, desert due to the lack of rain. And the last paragraph, paragraph five. Despite its dryness, the continent has colossal blizzards. Mighty winds lift snow from the ground and whip it around in huge white swirls. Winds can reach up to 200 miles per hour. Winds this strong would destroy most buildings. Antarctica's climate makes it a forbidding place for most living things. All right, so they have strong winds during blizzards that make it, now they use that word forbidding place. Now, I really don't know the meaning of that word, but I can relate it to something that I've heard. I know in the movie, The Beauty and the Beast, right? He's describing that rose in the west wing and she even asked the beast, Belle does, like, well, why can I go there? And his response was, because it's forbidden. So I guess forbidden means like it's off limits. You're not allowed to go. And in this instance, it's saying that it makes it a forbidding place for most living things, meaning they cannot survive. Make it almost impossible. To live slash survive. Okay, so I have my thinking jotted down here. Um, you guys, as you read through Antarctica's life, you're probably not going to use a 
post-it note, you can just jot down your thinking after each paragraph. We know that really good readers often take time to like stop and jot their ideas as they're reading, but that's my version so that you guys can see kind of what I'm thinking as I'm reading. So now let's go back over here into a desert of ice on this graphic organizer. Um, now, we said that what kinds of animal life can be found in Antarctica? Well, the only thing we really read about was the emperor penguin, and we also read a few other statements, and I even included them over here, right? There's no humans living here, and it also said that few creatures can survive the winter cold because it's so extreme. Um, kinds of plant life, it actually didn't mention that in the article, so now we're going to jump up to the first guiding question, which was, what is the climate like? Well, if you remember in paragraph one, they actually described the climate as inhospitable, right? It is inhospitable. And then they also said that it is the coldest windiest and driest place on earth. All right, so your job today is to go through, if you watch this screen over here with the text, I'm gonna scroll down. Just like Mrs. Body did in this video, you're gonna read through Antarctica's life. You can jot down your thinking at the end of each paragraph, and then you are going to complete the remaining half of this graphic organizer. Tomorrow, we will talk about this text. Um, after you complete this graphic organizer, you will not be submitting anything to me except for responding to three questions. One is a highlight the text, another is a multiple choice, and then the last question is a multi-select that has two correct answers. Let me know if you guys have any questions about reading.